Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing the brand new 2018 i9 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM and the best graphics card available to the new 9570 Dell XPS, also with that same i9 CPU, but instead we have an NVIDIA 1050 Ti graphics card. And we're gonna take a look at a variety of video editing tasks, looking both at Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, which you can run both of those editing programs on either a Windows or a Mac OS machine. And I'm gonna also add in Final Cut Pro just for comparison if you want to look into using Final Cut on a MacBook. Now I've done a lot of videos on the MacBook Pros and in those I was suggesting buying the XPS if you're somebody that works with Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. And I am sorry, I was partially wrong. There's been a couple differences in what I've seen in the past comparing MacBooks to the XPS and other Windows lineups. And it's just very, very interesting. Some things I figured out why it was the case and some other things just still don't make sense, but we will cover that and I will explain everything that you need to know. So first off, you guys know the specs of these machines. I'll put it up right here. And I do want to mention that the XPS is less expensive than the MacBook. The price does vary depending on where you're buying it from, if there's sales. So Dell prices usually vary, but the MacBook prices typically stay similar. So overall, either way, you're going to probably save money on the XPS. Now I'm also going to leave some links in the video description to the MacBook Pro and the XPS model that I would suggest. So I'm actually slightly changing my opinion on the XPS model that I would buy. And of course, with the MacBooks, I recommend getting the base CPU, not this i9 model. But either way, I wanted to compare the best each brand has to offer. Before we look at performance, I briefly want to touch on the differences between these laptops and my own preferences. I personally really prefer the MacBook Pro. I like the build quality. I really love the trackpad. I like the display is 16 by 10, which gives you more vertical space and that's nicer to edit on. I like that it's brighter. Uh, the keyboard, I kind of, I don't know, I don't know which way to go. I think a lot of you guys would prefer the XPS keyboard that has more travel. And uh, the speaker is also much better on the Mac. MacBook Pro. With that said, the XPS has a better cooling solution. It can cool down that really high performance CPU better. Although the fans are more annoying, they're louder, they're higher pitched, and they go up and down in speeds all the time, which is a bit annoying. And you can adjust that with a fan uh, profile if you go into the software. Uh, with that said, the speakers are worse, the trackpad is worse. Uh, it's, I think the quality is not as nice. It's not as premium feeling as the MacBook Pro, but along with that, you get a lot more ports. You get an SD card reader, which is really handy compared to just having USB-C or Thunderbolt 3. You do have a single Thunderbolt 3, so you can add external, um, like a eGPU or a display, something like that, but you are more limited in that way. Of course, you are gonna save some money on the XPS, which is definitely nice. And in general, the XPS laptops are the ones that I was suggesting for years because overall, they are some of the best, if not my favorite, out of all of the Windows laptops. Now, with all of that said, let's start taking a look at some benchmarks. We're gonna start off with Geekbench 4, and here in single core, uh, the both CPUs, since they're the same identical CPU, they score very similarly. Now, when I ran the multi-core test, the XPS was quite a bit lower, which made no sense. After I did more and more testing, I kind of realized that, hey, the Dell is not plugged in, neither is the MacBook Pro. What if that makes a difference? And in the past, I've tested this with the MacBook Pros and it made no difference. You get consistent results, whether you're on battery power or you're on the go, you're in a car driving, on an airplane or wherever you're at, the results are the same, doesn't matter. Now on the XPS, when I ended up plugging it in, our scores became much higher, very close to the MacBook Pro. So unfortunately, as we move on, I'm gonna show you guys the performance differences with the XPS plugged in and unplugged, and we do see some significant differences, especially depending on which program you're editing with, if you're editing on the go. And this could make or break your decision to buy the XPS, uh, because that battery, even though it's larger than MacBook Pros, it just cannot keep up with the internal components and give it enough power to run at its maximum potential where the MacBook, it can do so. If we look at the external charging bricks, the MacBook Pros is 87 watts. It can power it through USB-C where the XPS has a standalone power brick with a separate port at 130 watts. So you can see that the XPS does need more power. And because of this, you might get worse battery life as well, depending on what you're doing. So keep that in mind. Now the graphics card in the XPS is much more powerful
level. And we could see that in Geekbench 4's OpenCL test. We're getting much higher scores even if we unplug and we are on battery power. If we take a look at Unigen Heaven, which is a gaming benchmark that pushes the graphics cards, we get more than double the performance when we're plugged in. And even if we unplug, we still get much better graphics performance. Taking a look at Cinebench R15, which is a 3D rendering benchmark that pushes all the cores to its max. I ran this test a bunch of times. I took the average and we got a 1011 average score for the i9 MacBook Pro. With the XPS, if we are on battery power, we get about 10% higher score of 1107 because of that better cooling. But unfortunately, when we unplug it, we get an average of 963. So that is a significant loss of CPU performance, pushing it behind the MacBook Pro. Now, before we take a look at video editing performance, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor for this video, and that is Trade. If you're like me, you probably depend on coffee for your long video editing sessions. I know I do, I know that really helps me out, but I also enjoy coffee and I wanna like and enjoy the taste that I'm drinking it, not just to get a buzz and be able to keep going and finish my edit. Unfortunately, a lot of times when I'm at the store, you're going through the aisle, there's so much different options, you really don't know what to choose, and then you take a risk and oftentimes you don't end up liking what you get. Trade is here to make that easier with a quick six question quiz designed to find coffee that's right for you. They have a diverse, freshly roasted offering shipped right to your door anywhere in the United States, and the coffee they matched me with was fantastic. Buy a really great bag of coffee suited to your own tastes, and with a promo code MAX, Trade is offering the first 100 of my subscribers who click the link in the video description 50% off whatever coffee is recommended, so go check it out. Now I'm gonna start out with 4K H.265 or HEVC footage. This is a one minute timeline with two LUTs and film grain applied. I wanna briefly mention that some of these timelines are shorter. I did test them out and scale them out to much longer projects and the results are very, very linear, especially with 32 gigabytes of RAM in the system. Uh, I do these tests a bunch of times and as you guys will see how long some of these tests take, it is just way too long to be able to make sure the results are accurate and run much longer projects. But you can take the percentage difference and performance and apply it to your own workflows. So here we see that the XPS is actually quite a bit slower than the MacBook Pro, both in Premiere Pro, and I don't know why this is the case. Of course, we get worse performance if we are unplugged. I think it probably has to do with Windows versus Mac OS. Maybe that Mac OS is just more optimized for this type of footage. And then of course, if we add in Final Cut, you'll see that it's much, much faster. Now, these eight generation Intel CPUs have very, very good hardware for decoding and encoding H.265 footage. So I'm not sure if Premiere Pro is just not taking advantage of that yet and Final Cut is. That would be my best bet. Now let's move on to stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. And here in Premiere Pro, we actually get kind of similar results, slightly slower in Premiere Pro. And then of course, if we unplug it, the XPS gets even slower. And if we add in Final Cut, we get a massive difference in performance where Final Cut's taking 13 seconds compared to the best time of 441 with the MacBook Pro in Premiere Pro. And once again, that's the case because the final cut is maxing out the CPU and GPU where Premiere Pro is mainly using like 10, 15% of the CPU. Also, what didn't make sense is the XPS ran at a higher frequency on the CPU than the MacBook Pro, but the results are still slower. Now let's move on to a five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied. This is H.264 footage from the A7S II. And here we're finally starting to see some performance differences in Premiere Pro. So our MacBook took 23 minutes and 38 seconds compared to just 12 minutes and 22 seconds on the XPS that's unplugged. And when we plug it in, we're under 10 minutes, actually closer to nine at 9.06. Now that is a big improvement and this is what most of you guys are editing with, Premiere Pro and H.264 footage, so keep this in mind. Now for you DaVinci editors, unfortunately our results are not so good. Our MacBook Pro took four minutes, 53 seconds compared to the XPS at 13 minutes and 21 seconds plugged in and a massive 20 minutes when unplugged. Unfortunately, I don't know what's going on. In previous tests, like I mentioned, um, DaVinci Resolve worked better on a Windows computer than a Mac. So I don't know if it's just the newer versions are way more optimized for Macs, if they really worked on that and they didn't work on optimizing for Windows. I don't know if it's preferring the Radeon graphics card or what else could be the case, but that's a huge difference. Something that will make or break your choice of buying a MacBook Pro or a Dell XPS. 
Of course, if we add in Final Cut, it is once again the fastest compared to these other options. And as far as editing experience, the MacBook Pro is also the smoothest. Um, with the XPS in Premiere Pro, we see really good performance differences. And when we're plugged in, the editing timeline smoothness is great on the XPS. When we unplug it, it does start dropping frames and the performance is worse. And it kind of matches up with the MacBook Pro, even though the rendering speeds are faster. Now let's move on to Canon C200 RAW. This is 4K 60 footage with one LUT and film grain applied. And here, once again, we have a really good speed improvement in Premiere Pro. If you're using the XPS over the MacBook, we're seeing about 60% faster results if you're plugged in. But in DaVinci Resolve, unfortunately, we're much slower, especially if you're on battery power. One interesting thing to note is with the MacBook Pro in the timeline, we're playing back at about 27 frames per second. So that would be enough for your standard uh, 24 FPS footage, but you'd be dropping some frames for 30 FPS. And with the XPS, we're actually running at 38 F FPS if you're plugged in. So even though our renders are slow, timeline smoothness is better as far as timeline performance. But as soon as you unplug, it drops to a massive 11 frames per second, which is really showing that we're not getting enough power to those components that are needed to play back this footage and be able to render it in real time. And lastly, we can add in Final Cut, which also can't play back the 4K 60 FPS footage perfectly. It drops frames, but our render speeds are super quick. Now let's finish off with 4.5K red raw footage. This is also with some LUTs and some color corrections applied. Here, we're seeing slower results in DaVinci Resolve, quite a bit slower actually. In Premiere Pro, we're seeing some massive improvements. I'm talking almost four times as fast if you're running the XPS plugged in and close to twice as fast with the XPS on battery power. And here, if I'm looking at our, my performance of the graphics in the CPU, our CPU is running at about 80% load and the graphics card is basically being maxed out. So Premiere Pro is really making really great use of that hardware and giving us really great performance. But if we take a look at DaVinci Resolve on the MacBook Pro, that actually gets the best results by far. So that seems to be the winning combination if you're working with red footage. You're gonna get really good results, DaVinci Resolve, in the MacBook Pro. Of course, Final Cut gets some great scores as well. And in last place, if you wanna edit red on a MacBook Pro with Premiere Pro, that sucks. <laughs> your results are slow, both in the timeline and also when you're doing your exports. So let me know what you guys think. If this video has been helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, ask in the comment section below. Once again, I have links to the laptops I used right here for my tests and also the ones that I would buy if I were most of you. If money does matter, I would save some money and get the other two recommendations. So overall, I wanna say I was a bit wrong. I don't know mostly why I guess just not have enough power for that CPU and the graphics card is a big reason, but also maybe differences in Mac OS and Windows. Uh, DaVinci Resolve didn't used to be this way. I don't know if it just got slower on Windows or just got much faster on Mac or what the deal is, but my previous comparisons with the last gen XPS and the MacBook, we did not see these kind of uh, massive slowdowns on the Windows side. I wanna mention, I did make sure that all the battery saving options, all that stuff was turned off, all the settings were correct, and these tests were done multiple times. So in conclusion, in the second conclusion here, if you edit with Premiere Pro, definitely, definitely go with uh, the XPS. I would, even though I don't like the laptop as much, I think the MacBook is a superior product, I would definitely make that choice. DaVinci Resolve, definitely go with the MacBook Pro, especially if you're doing some of the more difficult footage. And of course, if you buy a MacBook, take a look into Final Cut. You get some really great performance, especially timeline performance. It is just so optimized. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you guys don't miss out on future videos. Enable those notifications because YouTube is not showing all the videos to your subscription feed. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next one.